The sounds of sobbing alien students echoed through the prestigious Nasat Galactic Academy lecture hall as they learned of the sacrifices made by the brave humans who saved the entire goddamn galaxy. Quasar, a bright young Nasat pupil, wiped away the tears streaming down his face. He sat in the front row of the crowded auditorium, hanging on every word as Dr. Zyloth, an elderly Nasat professor, told the incredible story. Dr. Zyloth stood at the podium, his wrinkled hands gripping the sides. Students, what do you know of the human race? Her tentacle shot up from a blue-scaled student in the back. I heard they're brave but reckless. Quasar's antennae twitched as he raised his hand. The humans are known for their adaptability and resourcefulness. Dr. Zyloth nodded. Indeed, and it was those very qualities that allowed them to save us all from the vortex. Confused murmurs spread through the lecture hall. Quasar leaned forward in his seat, his heart pounding with anticipation. The professor continued, his voice low and serious. The vortex was a massive black hole that threatened to consume everything in its path. The Galactic Council, made up of the greatest minds from across the stars, worked tirelessly to find a solution. But even with all our advanced technology and vast knowledge, we failed. The lecture hall fell silent, the weight of Dr. Zyloth's words hanging in the air. In our darkest hour we turned to the humans, a species many still considered primitive. Dr. Zyloth paused, his eyes scanning the room. But they were our last hope. If the humans couldn't find a way to stop the vortex, the galaxy as we knew it would be lost forever. Quasar felt a chill run down his spine. He knew the stakes were high, but hearing it from Dr. Zyloth made it all too real. The professor took a deep breath before continuing. The Galactic Council chose a human named Timothy Robertson to lead a dangerous mission into the heart of the Vortex. Robertson was a brilliant scientist and a fearless explorer, but even he knew the odds were stacked against him. As Dr. Zyloth delved deeper into the story, Quasar and his fellow students sat transfixed, their hearts racing as they learned of the incredible sacrifices and acts of bravery that would ultimately save the galaxy from total annihilation. Dr. Zyloth paused for a moment, letting the gravity of the situation sink in. The lecture hall was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Quasar and his fellow students were on the edge of their seats, their hearts racing as they waited to hear what happened next. Timothy Robertson and his crew knew the stakes were high. Dr. Zyloth continued, his voice low and serious. They had to find a way to get to that artifact, or the galaxy would be lost forever. The professor pulled up a holographic display of Timothy's ship, a sleek silver vessel bristling with advanced technology. This was the Odyssey, a state-of-the-art spacecraft designed specifically for this mission. It was equipped with the most advanced propulsion, navigation, and defense systems the humans could create. As the Odyssey approached the Vortex, the crew found themselves faced with their first challenge, a treacherous asteroid field that surrounded the black hole like a deadly moat. Dr. Zyloth's voice grew tense as he described the scene. The asteroids were huge, some as big as mountains. They tumbled and spun in the Vortex's gravitational pull, creating a chaotic maze that seemed impossible to navigate. Several Nasat scouts had already lost their lives trying to study the Vortex up close. But Timothy was no ordinary pilot. He had spent years studying astrophysics and training in the most advanced flight simulators on Earth. With his keen instincts and quick reflexes, he guided the Odyssey through the asteroid field like a dancer navigating a crowded ballroom. The ship twisted and turned, narrowly avoiding collision after collision, until finally... They emerged on the other side, unscathed. The students let out a collective sigh of relief, but Dr. Zyloth was quick to remind them that the danger was far from over. As they approached the heart of the vortex, the gravitational pull became so strong that it threatened to tear the ship apart. The hull groaned under the immense pressure, and warning lights flashed on every console. Quasar felt his stomach drop as he imagined the terror the crew must have felt in that moment. But Timothy and his team remained calm and focused. 
With a daring maneuver, they activated the ship's advanced propulsion system, creating a counter-gravitational field that allowed them to break free from the Vortex's grasp and continue their mission. As they drew closer to the center of the black hole, they made a shocking discovery. There, floating in the darkness, was an ancient alien artifact that seemed to be the key to controlling the Vortex's behavior. Dr. Zyloth displayed a holographic image of the artifact, a glowing orb covered in intricate carvings. But the artifact was not unguarded, Dr. Zyloth warned, his voice grave. It was protected by a hostile alien race known as the Zorgons, who had long ago sworn to keep it from falling into the wrong hands. The holographic display shifted to show a group of tall, muscular aliens with scaly green skin and glowing red eyes. They wore armor that looked like it had been forged in the fires of hell itself, and they carried weapons that pulsed with an eerie energy. The Zorgons refused to let Timothy and his crew approach the artifact without a fight. They surrounded the Odyssey, their weapons trained on the human ship, and demanded that they turn back immediately or face the consequences. The Nassat students listened intently, their eyes wide with fear and excitement, as they wondered how Timothy and his crew would overcome this new obstacle. Dr. Zyloth leaned forward, his voice barely above a whisper. What happened next would go down in history as one of the most incredible feats of bravery and ingenuity the galaxy had ever seen. Timothy and his crew knew they had to act fast, or all would be lost. They had to find a way to outsmart the Zorgons and get to that artifact, no matter the cost. Timothy gripped the armrest of his chair as the Zorgon ships loomed on the viewscreen, their weapons charged and ready. He turned to his crew, his voice steady despite the tension in the air. We can't fight them head on. It'll only end in bloodshed and ruin our chances of getting to that artifact. He took a deep breath and activated the ship's advanced communication system, this is Captain Timothy Robertson of the Odyssey. I request to speak with your leader. There was a tense moment of silence before a deep, gravelly voice responded. I am Crag, leader of the Zorgans. What do you want, human? Timothy chose his words carefully. Crag, I understand that the artifact is sacred to your people. We have no intention of misusing its power. Our only goal is to save the galaxy from the Vortex. Crag's eyes narrowed on the screen. And why should I trust you? I'm willing to share our advanced technology with you, in exchange for your cooperation. We can work together to ensure the artifact is used safely. There was another pause as Crag considered the offer. Finally he spoke. Very well, human, but know that we will be watching your every move. Timothy let out a sigh of relief as the Zorgan ships backed off. He turned to his crew with a nod. Let's get to work. As they approached the artifact, now flanked by Craig and a group of Zorgon warriors, a sudden burst of energy rocked the Odyssey. Timothy stumbled, catching himself on a console as alarms blared throughout the ship. Captain, his first officer shouted, we're under attack, it's a rogue faction of Zorgons. Timothy cursed under his breath. He should have known it wouldn't be that easy. He turned to Craig, who looked just as surprised as he was. We need to work together to fend them off and protect the artifact. Crag hesitated for a moment before giving a curt nod. Agreed. Side by side, Timothy and Crag fought off the attackers, their weapons blazing in the darkness of space. It was a chaotic battle, with ships darting in and out of the fray, explosions lighting up the void. But through their unlikely alliance, they managed to drive back the rogue Zorgans and secure the artifact. Dr. Zeloth paused, letting the weight of the moment sink in. The Nasat students sat in rapt attention, their eyes wide with wonder. Quasar raised a tentative hand. How did they manage to use the artifact to stop the Vortex? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Dr. Zyloth smiled, leaning forward. Ah, that's where the true genius of Timothy Robertson shone through. You see... Dr. Zyloth paused again his holographic display flickering to life as it showed Timothy and Crag standing before the ancient artifact, its intricate carvings pulsing with an otherworldly energy. The artifact was unlike anything they had ever seen, Dr. Zyloth said. 
his voice hushed with reverence. It was a device capable of manipulating gravity itself, on a scale that defied comprehension. The display zoomed in on Timothy as he approached the artifact. His brow furrowed in concentration. He ran his hands over the carvings, his mind racing as he tried to decipher their meaning. Crag stepped forward, his eyes glowing with an ancient wisdom. The knowledge of our ancestors flows through these carvings, he said, his voice deep and resonant. They hold the key to understanding the artifact's true power. Together, Timothy and Crag worked tirelessly, poring over the artifact's secrets. They studied the carvings, cross-referencing them with the Zorgon's ancestral knowledge and Timothy's own expertise in advanced physics. Hours turned into days as they worked, the vortex looming ever closer. But finally, after countless calculations and simulations, Timothy had a breakthrough. That's it, he exclaimed, his eyes wide with excitement. If we can use the artifact to create a massive gravitational field, we can counteract the vortex's pull and cause it to collapse in on itself. Crag nodded, his expression grave. But to generate a field that strong, the artifact must be placed directly into the heart of the vortex. It is a suicide mission. The Nasat students gasped, their eyes wide with horror. But Timothy simply squared his shoulders, his jaw set with determination. Then I'll do it, he said, his voice steady. I'll fly the ship carrying the artifact into the vortex myself. Crag placed a hand on Timothy's shoulder, his eyes shining with respect. You are a brave warrior, Timothy Robertson. The Zorgans will stand with you until the end. As Timothy prepared for his final mission, the Zorgans readied their ships to escort him into the heart of the vortex. The Odyssey hung in space, the artifact secured in its cargo hold, a beacon of hope amidst the darkness. Quasar leaned forward in his seat, his heart's pounding as Dr. Zeloth described the scene. The fate of the entire galaxy rested on Timothy's shoulders, and the unity between the humans and Zorgons was a testament to the power of cooperation in the face of incredible odds. But would it be enough, Quasar wondered, his mind racing with possibilities. Could one human really save them all from the Vortex's destructive power? The Odyssey shuddered violently as it plunged deeper into the heart of the Vortex, the gravitational forces threatening to crush the ship like a tin can. Timothy gripped the controls, his knuckles white as he fought to keep the ship on course. The viewscreen was a maelstrom of swirling darkness, punctuated by flashes of blinding light as the Vortex's energy surged around them. Behind him, the Zorgon fleet fought a losing battle against the immense gravitational pull. One by one their ships crumpled and imploded, vanishing into the abyss, Crag's voice crackled over the comm, strained but determined. Timothy, we can't hold out much longer. You must reach the singularity before it's too late. Timothy gritted his teeth, his eyes locked on the sensors. The singularity was just ahead, a pinprick of impossible darkness at the center of the maelstrom. He pushed the engines to their limit, the ship groaning under the strain. Suddenly a massive Zorgan battleship loomed into view, its hull buckling under the pressure. It careened towards the Odyssey, on a collision course. Timothy's heart raced as he realized there was no time to evade. But at the last second, Craig's ship surged forward, placing itself between the Odyssey and the battleship. The two Zorgan vessels collided in a blinding flash of energy, the shockwave buffeting the Odyssey and sending it spinning towards the singularity. Crag, no! Timothy shouted, his voice raw with anguish, but there was no response. The Zorgon fleet had sacrificed itself to ensure Timothy could reach his goal. With a heavy heart, Timothy turned back to the controls. The singularity loomed before him, a yawning chasm of darkness that seemed to swallow all light and hope. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for what he had to do. The artifact hummed with power in the ship's hold, its intricate carvings pulsing with another worldly light. Timothy activated the release sequence, his hand hovering over the final button. He closed his eyes, picturing the galaxy he had sworn to protect, the trillions of lives that hung in the balance. But as his finger descended towards the button, a sudden realization struck him like a bolt of lightning. The artifact's power, if harnessed correctly, 
could create a localized wormhole, a gateway to escape the Vortex's destruction. It was a desperate gamble, but it was his only chance. With a frantic urgency, Timothy raced to the hold, his mind whirling with calculations and schematics. He tore open the artifact's control panel, his fingers flying over the ancient alien technology. Every second counted as the Vortex's pull grew stronger, threatening to drag the Odyssey into oblivion. Sweat poured down Timothy's face as he worked, recalibrating the artifact's energy matrix, rerouting its power to create a stable wormhole. The ship shook violently around him, the hull groaning under the immense pressure. Warning klaxons blared, red lights flashing in the darkness. But Timothy didn't falter. With a final triumphant cry, he slammed his fist down on the activation button. The artifact pulsed with blinding light, a shimmering portal opening up before the Odyssey. Timothy raced back to the controls, his heart pounding in his chest. With a deep breath, he plunged the ship into the wormhole, the artifact tumbling from the hold and vanishing into the singularity behind them. For a moment, there was nothing but darkness and silence. Then, a shockwave of unimaginable power erupted from the heart of the vortex, a blinding flash of light that consumed everything in its path. The Odyssey shuddered and lurched, the wormhole collapsing around them. Timothy clung to the controls, his vision blurring, his mind reeling. He didn't know where the wormhole would take them, or if they would even survive the journey. But as the ship hurtled through the fabric of space and time, he knew one thing for certain— the galaxy was safe. The Vortex had been destroyed, and the Zorgon's sacrifice had not been in vain, and though Timothy's fate was uncertain, he had fulfilled his mission, his legacy forever etched in the stars. The Nassat students sat in stunned silence as Dr. Zyloth's holographic projection flickered and faded, the weight of the story hanging heavy in the air. Quasar felt a lump in his throat, his eyes stinging with unshed tears. He raised a trembling hand, his voice barely above a whisper. Dr. Zyloth, what happened to Timothy Robertson? Did he survive the wormhole? Did he ever make it back home? The elderly Narsat professor sighed, his expression somber. The truth is we don't know. Some say he perished in the destruction of the vortex, his ship torn apart by the gravitational forces. Others believe he emerged somewhere on the other side of the galaxy, forever changed by his experiences. Quasar nodded, his mind racing with possibilities. He couldn't help but wonder what he would have done in Timothy's place, faced with an impossible choice and the fate of the galaxy hanging in the balance. Dr. Zyloth leaned forward, his holographic eyes seeming to pierce through each and every student. But there is one thing we do know. The Zorgans, led by Crag's bravery and sacrifice, played a vital role in saving us all. Without their help, Timothy Robertson and his crew would never have reached the singularity in time. A murmur rippled through the lecture hall, the students grappling with the weight of the Zorgan's sacrifice. Quasar felt a pang of sorrow, imagining the once-proud warrior race reduced to a shadow of its former self. The Zorgons suffered immense losses, Dr. Zyloth continued, his voice heavy with emotion. Their civilization never fully recovered, but their legacy lives on, a testament to the power of unity and sacrifice in the face of overwhelming odds. As the lecture drew to a close, the students filed out of the hall, their minds buzzing with questions and emotions. Quasar lingered behind, his gaze fixed on the now empty podium. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.